but do. Hey, everybody, ben. and welcome to another episode of Engineering Money, the podcast where three full-time engineers give their two cents on the financial news of the week. My name is Ben, a civil engineer in Washington State. Did you try to make it sound robotic? <laughs> yes. Oh, that remi- have you seen? Okay, my name's Tim. Um, I'm a mechanical engineer in Indianapolis. And then th- that's Joey. He lives in... Uh, he's... Oh, say your thing, Joey. <laughs> my name's Joey. I'm a biomedical engineer in Minneapolis. And I'm going to make yes. an executive decision right now. This is the last time we're introducing ourselves. Okay. No one um, cares. We don't we care. <laughs> okay, but have you seen those new ads from Google where it's literally... It looks like it was made by AI. It For me, I get ones for Google Home, and it's like buy the google home buy the google home and it just <laughs> is a robot voice <laughs> it's it's kind of scary actually and i don't know why only humans could make something sound so robotic i, I just don't like it anyway did anybody else forget that it was daylight savings this morning because i did yeah i woke yeah. up and was like wait what time is it <laughs> Like, dang, Technology. I slept in, well, but I didn't. No. Oh, you know, technology saved me because I still woke up at my normal time. Um, Do you set an alarm every morning? Yes. 7 a.m. on weekdays, 8 a.m. on weekends. Wow. Big sleeping. Also, happy pie day. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Math teachers across the nation are going nuts not really though because they're all working rem- or most of them are working remote yeah also it's a sunday so they're not <laughs> in school <True. laughs> oh and it's uh saint patrick's day on wednesday oh wow Wait. what a week oh yeah it is what does that mean wow. for the market Big though week. well you guys oh, know what gosh. happened last week last week was mario day i didn't so know that's that. why the market was up M- um March 10th, because it's M-A-R-10. Oh, I get it. I get it. Well, it was also Roblox Day, Mm. because Roblox, the highly anticipated public offering we've been talking about for months, happened. I didn't see anybody else hyping up Roblox as much as we were. We are Roblox boosters, officially. (laughs) We're doing a really bad job at it, though. <laughs> <laughs> but the so for those who didn't see it open, I think it was on the 11th. Um, it officially was opened to early traders at $45 a share, which I don't know how you get in that early trading pool, but that does not mean you and me trading on Fidelity got it at $45. Alert. So Fidelity would tell me as soon as it was available. Mm. Um, and by the time I was able to buy some, it was at $69. So it, mm. yeah. it definitely did that, uh, IPO thing that IPOs have been doing during, uh, pandemic times where they shoot up in the first day. The, the thing is it kind of petered out and it's yeah. what, what's its price now, Ben? I can't I see was, 69.5. All right, so it went right back to to where it opened essentially. Yeah, but if you look at the the chart for just Friday, it's crazy how perfectly it stayed at like seventy dollars. Oh right, it like really just there was there must have been a really heavy ceiling right at that price. Yeah, and it's this I don't know it's. The crazy thing that I read about it is at $45, the initial price that uh, essentially is a direct listing, not an IPO. So it's essentially just insiders selling their shares, Mm -hmm. getting a big, big bucks off of it. Uh, That was $30 billion worth of shares at $45. And so shooting up to 69, is it at what, like $45 billion worth of the company? Now that's what we call 69. (laughs) 
but the the interesting thing is about a year ago uh roblox tried to sell their company which is still a private company at the time and they the price they were asking for was i think four billion oh, wow well whoever so, didn't buy is kicking themselves now yeah Jeez. kind of cringe so there, there's kind of like yeah, a couple a couple ways to look at it. It's like, oh my gosh, Roblox has amazing growth, and whoever didn't buy it back then, it's kind of cringe. Or it's IPOs this year have been nuts, and this is nowhere near what it should truly be valued at. Mm. And Roblox insiders just took advantage of the IPO market to to make a lot of money. But either way you look at it, I think they were smart about it because. If you have an IPO and pretty much the price stays level, that means you you guessed correctly what the market value yeah. well, of your your company should be. They had it at forty five and it's at seventy now, but that's true. So it is a little bit off, but but it it has maintained at seventy right. for two days. <laughs> because if they came in at a hundred and then it went down to seventy, that's a bad look. You don't want your mm -hmm. IPO to go down in the first day. That is pretty crazy. And if they came in at like four dollars, which would put it at that four billion dollar valuation or whatever, and then it shot up, then they left money on the table. They they missed out on thirty billion dollars. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so so the fact that they put it right where, right around where people seemed happy with it, seems like they made a smart play. Remember Vital Farms. Yeah, I still think about Vital Farms all the time, Tim, because I'm a Vital Farms bag holder. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, IP IPOs and just meme stocks in general, which Roblox has been kind of both this year. I mean, it's been... Roblox, so yeah, you can't not meme it. It's the, the, the reason I want to bring them all up, though, is a lot of times the time that you hear about these stocks is after they've already just mooned <laughs> mm -hmm. and and that's when the the fomo sets in you're like oh geez look this stock's up 100 percent, and i miss out try to buy some it goes down and you're sad and that's, well, that's what you're it, supposed to do right buy high sell low <laughs> i mean that's the conventional wisdom right mm -hmm. yeah but I, I just want to bring it up and get your guys' take on it. What, I don't know, how do you deal with that? Are, do you find yourself just feeling FOMO hard and, and making irrational decisions? Or how do you keep yourself from doing that if you can avoid oh, it? Well, I mean, I totally do it. I, I totally feel the FOMO, but um, I just, you know... There will always be other ones. That's just what I think. Nice. I've just got to find the next... Like, I, There's no way I'm going to be able to find the next Amazon or something, but, you know, if that, it, it goes back to deep value, Joey. Deep value. Got to find the deep value. value. Well, my strategy is always to just never miss out. I'm just always yeah. in. And then I never have to just feel the perfect. FOMO because then... I, you know, I haven't missed it. Or, yeah, you could always just buy, like, one share of all these meme stocks, and then if it goes up, you feel good about it. And then if you if it goes down, then you're like, oh, I didn't lose too badly because there was only one share. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've definitely done that before. Just buy a tiny bit or even fractional shares. Just be like, yeah. I'll, I'll put 50 bucks in there. Yeah. And, and the thing is... For me, I think a lot of times, if it's a meme stock, it's already too late. Yeah, you need, you you need, need to have gotten it before meme. it's a meme stock. Um, but Joey, remember remember what you did with GameStop? <laughs> yes, that's that's why I want to bring this up because I did I did the exact wrong thing. I was like, oh my gosh, GameStop, look at this, it's nuts, and I I bought it at three hundred and fifteen dollars a share. Okay. <laughs> Well, you still I forgot that but you previously that. you made a lot of oh money God. in like 
30 minutes though, didn't you? Oh, okay. So the the first trade I did was yes, it was like a 30 minute trade that went from $150 to 130. And then I'm like, whoop de doo I made a bunch of money. I put that back in at 315. Oh no. <laughs> and then it went down. <laughs> you put all that back in? I put all of the money I gained. I figured, oh. all right, if it goes to zero, I'm only back to where I started. Okay, well, you can't feel too bad about that because you still haven't lost any money at this point in the grand That's scheme of things. That's why I'm still, ho still holding. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> nice. It's it's nuts. Yeah, I have a friend that bought... He it, Towards the end of that one week where it was crazy... Um, He's like, you know, normally I'm a disciplined investor, but I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna buy in on this. And I was like, no, you probably shouldn't. It's like, <laughs> I don't know, man. It's and not he, a disciplined investor thing to do. <laughs> he he bought like at three hundred dollars, and then he sold at forty. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> that hurts. Yeah. But that's it's, that's why, yeah. To me, it 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 doesn't make me want to try to get in on the next meme stock. What it makes me feel is glad for myself to be holding on to things like Vital Farms. Because it's like, who knows? Maybe it'll take off one day. Yeah. It's just yeah, not maybe, today. <laughs> maybe one day you'll check your account and it'll be up 50% in a day. And you're going to be like, oh. Yeah. Neat. See? You never know. You never know. But this brings me to my next segue. It's an episode full of beautiful segues. Speaking of FOMO, I want to talk about coronavirus vaccines. Mm, and fear of missing because out. Because apparently fear of missing out is a significant driver of vaccine acceptance. I, I, I don't know if you've heard mm. in recent years, but anti-vax movements are a thing. And people yes. are afraid of vaccines which is a big problem when you need to get everyone vaccinated for a pandemic. But a big driver of, of bringing the sentiment of the vaccine back up has been vaccinated people getting to do stuff. <laughs> mm. That's a good way to do it. Well, yeah, because the CDC released last week. They said it's okay to not social distance and not wear masks if everybody in the room is vaccinated fully. Yeah. Ben. Oh, wait, never mind. Um, I'm guessing it's a wedding question that you're going to ask offline now. <laughs> no, I was just, uh, I'll tell you okay. later. <laughs> okay. Um, like, all of us, we're in the, the groups that'll probably um, – not get vaccinated very soon well i mean didn't joe biden also say last week that starting may 1st is when he hopes at the everybody's very latest eligible. everybody's going to be able to walk mm -hmm. in and get their vaccine if they want it and then yeah, it's by that, the end of that would may be great. where he says everybody who wants one should get it like the month of may is right is and like well the, the may 1st thing time. Is, is you can you can get in line essentially yes. everyone's eligible to, to sign yeah. up it doesn't mean you can you can walk in necessarily but they have also been expanding who can administer the vaccine like there's the right. number of vaccination sites has been growing pretty rapidly like I think they just recently opened it up to Dennis office um, and veterinary hmm. like animal care hospitals they can now administer vaccines as well, or they're eligible to. And can. Wow. Um, and if if you if any of you or anyone listening is just like jonesing to get the vaccine, there's actually a way that you can get it earlier as well. There's this website called Doctor B, Dr. and B. you you sign up and. What they want to use every single vaccine, right? Right. Yeah. And so if people sign up to come get their vaccine but do not show up to get it, then they have leftover vaccines for the day. So they they mail out or they like text you if you're on this um, text uh -huh. list from Dr. B and say, hey, there's a vaccine. You are first in line. Come get it. 
And so I've actually had a few coworkers that have gotten it that way. Yeah, there's. I've also heard that it tends to get delegated by state, mm -hmm. but then the state distribution might not be perfectly matching with city populations. Mm -hmm. So, like, I know in the Twin Cities here, I cannot just go into CVS and get a vaccine. There's not enough. But if I were to drive an hour or 45 minutes to St. Cloud, you can go into a CVS there and get a vaccine because they have more mm. vaccines than people. Yeah. Yeah. And so yeah. another example is my fiance's mother is a nurse and it's almost every single shift she's had since beginning administering vaccines because that's what she does now, like all day, every shift. Mm -hmm. Almost every single day, there's leftovers where mm. yeah, it's basically the nursing staff there that day just kind of goes around the hospital and tries to find people that just happen yeah, to be there. You can't. <laughs> I don't think you can just use them tomorrow. No, because they all no, expire. No, once you take them out of deep yeah. freeze. Yeah. It's, it's like that one uh, story in the one of the big blizzards we had and, and vaccine workers started going along the side of the road to vaccinate people because they were stranded in traffic and the vaccines were going to expire. So they just trudged through the snow and vaccinated people on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'd be but a little wary of that. I might... we're, we're doing whatever we can to get people vaccinated and to bring it all back to um, finance, you know, financial news of the week. The thing that it made me think about is a oh, while yeah. back, we were talking about how we come out of coronavirus lockdown, what that does to the economy, and the possibility of both inflation and deflation, whether it's mm -hmm. the demand for things goes up first because people are getting out there, or the supply goes up first because corporations are get their factories running faster. And to me, it seems like the deflation case is not happening because a people are already going out and doing stuff whether they should have been or not and now with the vaccines coming out it's just ramping that up vaccines ramping up faster than we thought uh if, if you look at coronavirus numbers right now we're kind of ticking up and i think that shows that people hear vaccines are coming out and they relax which really they shouldn't be doing because we need everyone vaccinated before you can do that. But as far as the inflation versus deflation case goes, it seems like people are getting out there. People want to do stuff, and they're gonna they're gonna be spending money. So the deflation case is kind of not. I don't know. I think the the chances of that yeah. are going way down. But uh, the the inflation case is the one that the Fed can deal with so much more easily, because that means the Fed just raises rates which they haven't mm -hmm. been doing or, or talking about. Whereas deflation would have been a, a real struggle because rates were already so low. Yeah, because they, they are talking about raising them sooner than they had thought, right? Yeah, and that's why a, uh, a while back we had all the all the big growth stocks just tanking on the news of increased uh, interest rates. Yeah. Dang. What is so, that? So this is uh, state by state um, where everybody's at. This is number of people vaccinated. This is percent of the population. Alaska's killing it, guys. <laughs> Look at them go. They don't even have to refrigerate yeah, them. Yeah, because nat <laughs> Just... nationwide, it's almost time to restart. Uh oh, Ben. Uh, I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait an hour so we don't <laughs> screw this up. <laughs> uh, I think the national number right now it's like 11.2 percent has been fully vaccinated and 20.9 percent have been given their first dose but they're up to four so and a dang. half million a day yeah wow so that's one it's looking that's pretty over, promising for getting people out there that's a little over one percent a day then yeah. right and it's it's rapidly rising is i think the because as you mentioned ben they're opening more vaccination sites and allowing more types of people to start vaccinating dentists veterinarians and medical students are now hey. allowed to give you a shot yeah joey how many more things did you have to talk about i have no more things to talk about okay because we have 10 seconds left hit the nail on the head look at that 20 minutes wow 
We are going to stretch it out. Three, two, one. Okay, goodbye. Like and subscribe. Leave.